bill that's been presented to us today. Okay, we have a motion for a strike all on bill, House Bill 992 to have a motion. We have a motion. Um, any, all, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. Bill passes as strike all put in place. Okay, next bill. Uh, House Bill 1211. Administrative hearing procedure for a commission on marine resources to revise the authority executive director of our Department of Marine Resources to make final decisions during this. And we have a strike all that will be presented by Senator uh, Thompson. And also I want to uh, recognize the fact that we uh, we have our director here with us today, General Spragans. Thank you so much for coming up and on this uh, miserable rainy day. But thank you, sir. I'll turn it over now to uh, Senator Mike Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The original bill, uh, 1211, had the Commission for Marine Resources reviewing the complaint, uh, conducting... So the original bill, this, this involves when a licensee is accused of some violation of, of one of our regulations from the DMR. The original bill had the Commission reviewing the complaint, uh, conducting the initial hearing, and then making recommendations to the department. Generally, uh, what we're doing right now, we've got a similar bill out there with the real estate commission. We're giving the licensee an option of having an administrative hearing officer in lieu of the commission hear that initial complaint. And that's what this, that's what how, that's what the strike all amendment does. So just kind of walking through it, picking up in, in section two changing it or, or, or where going through where the department uh, starts the administrative uh, penalty processing. And then if you flip over to starting there at line 80, or rather line 71, after you get through the process, the director, if he determines that there's been a, that there's been a violation, will impose a fine. And then dropping down to line 80, after that fine's been assessed, the licensee has 15 days to request an informal settlement conference with the director. Going on through to in section three, if they don't resolve anything at the settlement conference, there's the licensee can request a formal hearing and that formal hearing will be in front of a hearing officer from the attorney general's office. Lines 131, on through uh, the bottom of line, line 160. That's the hearing officer's uh, authority to conduct the hearing, to compel witnesses, and then make its recommendation to the director. And then at the end of the day, it's the director's determination to make, the, to, make to accept the hearing officer's recommendation or not. The licensee still has the option after the going through that hearing officer process, if he's still aggrieved, he still has an appeal to the Chancery Court. The idea here is just that the hearing officer option is available to the licensee at that initial stage, as opposed to having to wait for an appeal to have an independent trier of fact. Any, are there any questions? Yes, sir. I don't know what that was. Uh, my only question is if it's a federal offense that might be in the neighborhood of a, a felony, uh, this would all be circumvented and, and straight through the due process. Okay, so first of all, it, it, the the limit on, on this process is $10,000. So if the fine is more than 10000 it's going to get referred out to to, to the felonies a thousand, to right? Court. I don't know where, where the limit on a felony is, but under the current law, ten thousand, anything more than ten thousand dollars gets referred out. But to your question about the the federal action, if you look down at section nine, it starts on line two fifty six. Um, that that's picking up the the federal language. Thank you. Okay. Right, 
Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Do I have a motion to accept this this bill as a strike off? Do pass strike off. Do have a motion? Senator, Senator Johnson. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. We'll report this bill. Thank you. Uh, next is House Bill 1288, uh, Charter Vessel Operators Permit, create to authorize the sale of alcoholic beverages by the holder of. This is the sister bill, and it's identical to the one that we had in the Senate that was uh, authored by Senator Delano. And um, so what we would like to do is I'll recognize him to explain this bill since it's exactly like the one that he authored in the Senate. Senator Delano. Appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we currently have on our books a, a law that will allow for ch charter vessels that are over 150 persons uh, to sell liquor by the glass. Uh, what this bill does is it changes a, a the, the definition of the vessel and removes it uh, down to a second permit or a permit that can be received for a vessel that has uh, more than 49 passengers. So that's a, that explanation of the bill. It just takes it from 150 down to uh, 49. That's an explanation of the bill. If there are any questions, I'll have a motion at the proper time. Any questions? Motion will be title sufficient, do pass. I have a motion for title sufficient, do pass, do pass. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Same same sign, opposed? All right, we'll, uh, we'll report that bill out. Now we have House Bill 594. Uh, I think all of you have it in front of you. And this is the one that uh, uh, this bill uh, takes up the, the uh, Coastal Wetlands Protection Act to define the ordinary high water mark. Yeah. Senator Thompson will explain this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, House Bill 594 changes the definition of ordinary high water mark in order to bring that definition in line with the Corps of Engineers statute. Director Spragan is here, is here and he's, he's very familiar with the issues that we have right now where DMR issues permits for boat docks, bulkheads, things like that under a general Corps of Engineers permit. Is that correct, Director? Yes, sir. There was a case, or the, a decision a few years ago where a, a landowner felt like that he wasn't getting a fair shake on where his bulkhead was, took the department to court, and the judge, the chancellor, noticed there was a discrepancy just in the definition between what we, what the department uses as, as its ordinary high water mark versus what the core permit application is for ordinary high water mark, and found that the department had properly issued the permit. For to summarize, what this does. So now, landowners who want to get a bulkhead or or, or a dock or whatever put in not only have to go through the department, but also have to go separately to the core because the department's permits don't fall under that blanket core permit. They have to go get this, make a separate application to the Corps of Engineers, which means they have to go get an, their own engineer to stamp drawings to make that determination of where the high water mark is. What this bill's designed to do is to bring the definition of ordinary high water mark under the department's regs in line with the Corps' regs so that the department could go back to issuing those boat and house pier dock permits under the Corps' general permit. Is that a fair explanation of the bill? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. please. Yeah, basically, it's going to allow us to do the same thing we've always been doing for the last 20 years. It's just taking the word. It's not going to change anything about it. It's not going to affect the Yes, sir. That, that's my understanding of the bill. Um, and to the, to the director's point, lines 91 through 93, there was some concern about whether or not this would have any effect on the delineation of the mean high tide line as far as it goes for tidelands. And that's addressed on lines 91 through 93, where this definition is expressly excluded from the tidelands, from the definitions used under tidelands. Okay. So there's, we have a couple of questions. First, of Senator England. Yeah, I have a I have a concern with with changing this definition as far as 
as property owners are concerned, is this going to result in uh, a potential situation where a property owner that has a property line now that they recognize under the current definition, and if this moves that moves coastal, the definition of coastal wetlands a certain way that they may be losing property. In other words, this, this could end up being a taking of, of in a, an individual's uh, property rights without um, without their being um, reimbursed or, or, or accommodated on that. Well, I think first any decision by the, any de determination made by the department, the, if the landowner feels aggrieved, they can always go to court and, and, and have that due process. But what this is, is if there's a, where that permit starts, so anything built out over the ordinary high, beyond the ordinary high water mark has to have a permit. The Corps of Engineers has a blanket permit issued to the state of Mississippi that's administered by DMR in order to allow that person to build a boat dock, say, over that perm or, or a boathouse over that, beyond that ordinary high water mark line. Right now, because of that decision a couple years ago, the DMR permit doesn't, the definition of ordinary high water mark that's under the DMR permit doesn't match the core definition, the definition used by the Corps of Engineers. So it's a permitting issue rather than a ownership issue, if that makes sense. You're not changing where that ordinary high water mark is it, 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 by this definition. It right. just allows DMR staff to make that determination of where that line is so that when they issue the permit, when DMR issues the permit, it's in accordance with Corps of Engineers definition of ordinary high water mark. Right. I know so the, the, the language that's been taken out, the, the the quote that I looked up on the on the, the statute as it exists now, it says the watermark of ordinary high tide. So if you have an individual property owner that that has an established bulkhead at the watermark of ordinary high tide uh, under under current permitting, and they need to repair that. And if we change this definition, and it turns out that ordinary high water mark is moved a certain direction where they they're yeah. losing part of their property, is that would that not result in that? I, I think General Sprague could probably speak to how that's handled administratively. Because it's not, it will not affect you. You can build the bulkhead right back where it's at, always. That does not affect. As a matter of fact, the Secretary of State can give you two votes. So if you want to go in and you want to you got a failing bulkhead, if you want to build a new one, you can go up to two feet and join the water and then, you know, be able to build that. And that's so you don't have to tear that down and not have to put it all on you. It will not affect what you have already. It will not affect what I think what you may be referring to that picture we saw, that, that photo where, where the pylons were out here, but it actually, while he was working on it, the land was back here and, and they were trying to get back even with the two neighbors, but the pylons were already established. And, and I think that's what we're talking about here is that you would allow them to being his pylons were in place already from years back. Yes, sir, he was you. rebuilding his bulkhead at the time. Yes, and, that, and that, you know, they could, everything has a different circumstance or something that you've got to have, you know, you need, but we work for everyone else. Okay. The Secretary of State will allow it, we will allow it. Thank you, sir. Senator Wiggins? Yeah, so um, you've cleared up that it's not part, this is not affecting tidelands. Okay, so May, this is either for Senator Thompson or for Joe. Um, what, and I know you've said permitting, but what is ordinary high water mark used for? The ordinary high water mark is used for the same word, the actual use of building bulk. And uh, it's basically how much the water moves in and out. And it's an ordinary high water mark that gives you that point that you have X amount of trial. And who, who currently determines that now? Uh, up to the ruling that the judge made in the Department of Resources. Now, without it, if we don't change the wording, you have to go hire a um, surveyor. If you can find one, if you do it, but most of them are tied up with big things, big projects, they're not dealing with anything small. Or you have to go to four engineers for two years. Okay. And you're saying the Corps of Engineers could say, 
there, what can what constitutes high water mark? Corps of Engineers says one thing, and y'all are saying another. Well, what is that's So, so I'm sorry. So this bill, this allows you, this brings this in line with the Corps of Engineers, okay? And which, and y'all certainly are faster than the Corps of Engineers in permitting. And they give us a I, I didn't do a good job of explaining that part. There's a general permit issued by the Corps. Right. Everything that's administered under that general permit is done by DMR. Right. What the, what the Chancellor found was that the discrepancy in, in ordinary high watermark versus what we used mean high tide, I think, before, that where those actually, when they go out and everybody set the flags and say, this is where you can build your bulkhead or this is where your, right. your, your dock can extend over, where they set those flags, um, the chancellor said, well, because those definitions are a little different. Even though the flags may be in the same place under either definition, but because the definitions were a little different, our per the DMR issued permits didn't comply with the core permits and therefore were improper. So what all this is doing is bringing, this, bringing the department and the definition that the department uses back under that general permit. And, and the last question, and so we're not changing mean high watermark or water mean high tide under Thailand's definition. What this says is that the ordinary high water mark is used here under, the, under this section is not the same as the mean high water and should not be used for determination of the boundary between private property and Thailand. Well, is there, okay, it says should, but should doesn't necessarily mean prohibited. So the intent of this, so I guess the question, maybe an amendment would be in order shall not. That's, yeah, I think that'd be a friendly amendment. Okay, that would be my amendment at the proper time, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thanks, Senator Blanton. All right, uh, first of all, I appreciate um, the, the effort to, to get this corrected. I think uh, the way that it's actually used in, in, in common practice, and General, correct me if I'm wrong on, on this, but the way we've used this in the past is that this has been the beginning point, the starting point for determining a survey or wherever it is. And if when the arm or when DMR was allowed um, by the state to determine what that high water mark was, I didn't have to go to the feds and ask the feds to give me a determination of where the line was because the feds had agreed under their general permit that that the state does a pretty good job of it. The chancellor then turned around and said, no, there was a discrepancy. This language cleans that up and it allows for a permittee to come in with minimal information that's required for the application process under uh, coastal zone consistency plan to be able to go forward. So this is this is actually really good and I, I appreciate the effort and, and I understand what you're talking about. Here's one question that I have about it. And this may be a, a, a little bit off topic, but since we're talking about this right now, how do you deal with, or how long does an ordinary high water mark stay in, in, in place? In other words, if it's drawn on a map in 2021 and, and it's signed off uh, through DMR, through coastal zone consistency, and they determine that, is it is it for a five year period that's consistent with most of the core processes or, or what? And the reason why I'm asking is I'm dealing with alluvians or, or accretions where you have shifting of sands and soils and, and how that affects the deed of the property. And that's where I'm, I, I, I don't want to confuse the, the two points, but there is a, there is a tie here at some point. And is there an administrative relief that's already in place for a homeowner or a property owner that has an accretion that is where they've lost property? Um, is that process? Is there a process that's there, and how does the how does the agency handle that? General Spray. Process, but, uh, you know, sad to say, this is your waterline right now, and then uh, five years from now, the water is at taken into the water and moved across the water. Then your waterline moves back. So it's not like you're going to be able to get to it. You know, it's a it's a you know it's a it's a if it's already there, 
you already marked it, and you already got some form of a uh, uh, structure of any type, we're not going to change that. You can back it behind it. If it's washed in, you can still back it behind it. So that puts your high tide or your warm one there, high water one. Uh, what this does, uh, you know, the, the best thing I can say to that, if you're looking for something that you're trying to do, is go out and have it marked and then put something in the water. Put something there and say, that's my spot. And then from that point, then you don't have to worry about it. Because it gives DMR the, gives a, 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 a reference point to say, right. this is where we acknowledge that line through an ordinary high water mark. Yes. Okay. And it will, it will help an outline in order to do that, to be able to have something to prove where it's at. And, uh, and that will help them to be able to prove it. But otherwise, we have no choice to go where the water line is. Thank you, sir. Now, you still have a fair price. Yeah. You know, and, but that doesn't mean you know it's not. Senator Seymour, did you have a question? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question is, what is the differential between the, the mean high tide line and what you're calling high water mark there is none this is just a lawyer's terminology for the course right yeah. okay <laughs> all right at this time i think we're ready for an amendment yes yes mr okay. chairman my amendment would be in line 92 to change the word should the shall so it would read shall not be used for determination okay we have an amendment to change the wording on line 92. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. The amendment passes. Now we're ready for passage. Passage for the Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, General, uh, let me ask you one question on, on this. Uh, I, I know you mentioned that, that currently it's your policy that if there's a bulkhead out that needs to be replaced and it's already there, if there's some sort of marker that shows where the property is, you guys will let them go out there and do that. That's that's your your policy. Is what what guarantee do we have that that extends beyond your uh, administration with the Department of Marine Resources? Is that that's, uh, that's written in our in our regs. It has nothing to do with me personally. That's written in the regs of the Department of Marine Resources. So and that's also Okay, thank you. And, and one other question that I do have, um, and I know Senator Seymour mentioned, you know, lawyers and definitions, and it's an important point to make because I, where I'm concerned is, do we have, do we define this term, uh, ordinary high watermark? Do we turn? Is it defined differently in other parts of, of Code Section 49? And and my concern would be that, that it's my understanding when when Mississippi creates a definition we do so in our benefit and here we are walking back and using a federal definition to come in line for this purpose are we are we signaling an intent to go now with with federal definitions in other parts of the code where we're we're defining the watermark that might be more favorable to us sir i don't know that answer so i'm not going to try to tell you 100 but i don't think we are uh, my understanding is that what we're trying to do is just maintain what we've always done and that is to have a high water mark in college According to the, uh, the judge, we were not able to determine the mean high tide, but we can do it ordinary on the work one. And so that's basically all that we're trying to do. And the court is not going to mess with us on this. The court is pretty easy. They say, you know, we trust you, Mississippi. We trust what you can do. We give you a blanket. You go do what you think is right. And that's exactly what we do. And that's the way to go to the very few times. Senator England, uh, counsel said he doesn't think so either. Okay. No, we don't. Okay. That answer your question. It does. Okay. Okay. So we have we have an amendment strike all, and uh, do we have a, a motion? Strike all. Title sufficient. Do pass. Strike all. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Rise and report. Same sign. No. Rise and report. This meeting is over. Thank you all for coming. Hey. Mike.